I've got the awesome job of representing Stewart's graduate students. Um, so I am of the generation of the Camland students. So I'm going to try to stick to sort of the 2001 to 2008, since that's the, the period I can talk to the most. And in a rarity among the experiments we've talked about today, Camland was one of the ones that actually measured something. We actually saw oscillations. But neutrinos inherently are basically almost nothing. So kind of goes along with things. So what was it like to be Stewart's graduate student? So the beginning. Almost all of us started by meeting with Stuart in his office. Um, so this is a picture from Tommy. Uh, and he correctly says, this is like Stuart's look right before he tells you something vaguely outrageous, making fun of you, teasing you very kindly. Um, for me, it was almost always about ponies. And uh, <laughs> um, so you went into his office, and, and you talked to him. and. He did bring out in you this uh, sort of excitement about what he was doing. I had been a graduate, uh, sorry, an undergraduate in his quantum mechanics class, and this was right during the time of the PMT installation for Camland. And he had, of course, you know, solved the two neutrino oscillation uh, probability and all that sort of stuff. So I was very excited about neutri anti neutrinos and Camland, and he was more than happy to encourage me to stay at Berkeley. He was one of the few people that really couldn't say anything about spending both graduate and undergraduate at Berkeley. Um, so moving on, whenever you met with Stuart, especially at the beginning, he would like to see you know, how you would react to things. And so one of his favorite things was the graduate student aptitude test. And actually, I wasn't that great at it. Dan was always the best at it. So he's going to demonstrate for us the graduate student aptitude test. <laughs> And afterwards, we are going to test all of you to see whether you could be graduate students for Stuart. <laughs> so yeah, when I first came to Stuart to ask whether uh, you know, he had some interesting research I could work uh, whether I could join Camlin and work with him on that, he asked me, well, first you have to take the aptitude test. And he showed me, and this is how it goes. <laughs> so little, little did he know that that's all I could do. <laughs> <coughs> so periodically he would walk up and down the hallways as stewards want to do and come up to us and go. <laughs> and the correct response was to Joe it back that you still could pass the graduate student aptitude test. So as I said, what really in, in brought me to Stuart's office in the first place was actually this photo from Camland. Um, I think it's one of the most beautiful things, and probably that's why I'm a neutrino physicist. Um, so I get started on Camland in uh, June of 2001. Um, and my first week up at the lab was a very exciting week. And so this is coming from Kevin Lesko. It was the week of the first snow result. And uh, I went and sat next to Stuart during the presentation by Kevin for, for these results. And I have to admit, I was a very young graduate student. I knew about snow, but I didn't quite, I think, understand at the time how big a result it was. So I'm watching Kevin give this talk. And this made a huge impression on me because he used PowerPoint animation for the first time. And he actually had the pot point jump down and come to that point, showing, of course, that, um, that, that neutrinos oscillate and what we're seeing in the solar neutrino problem is actually uh, neutrino oscillation. Um, what was even more is that this hinted, and I remembered this hinting a little bit more at the time, but it was really going to be the large mixing angle solution. And Stuart, as we were leaving, kind of nudged me and was like, Lindley, you chose well. <laughs> and it was just sort of a classic Stuart moment of, of, uh, of sort of quiet and, uh, and slightly teasing. Uh, of the, of the student. OK, so that was the beginning. He accepted you as your graduate student. And now we move into the middle. And so what was it really like in the, the bulk of our graduate uh, careers? Well, for the three of us that were the Camland graduate students, we had great people to work with. And I think, I don't know if I'm alone in referring to them as my postdocs. But for most of our tenure, it was actually two to one ratio of postdocs to graduate students. And usually, it's the reverse. Um, and so Stuart not only you know, 
advised us wonderfully himself, but he surrounded us with people that were really great mentors uh, in their own right. Um, I still refer to them as my postdocs. This confused people even as last week when they were really impressed that I had trained Karsten. <laughs> <laughs> And I had, to, I had to say, yes, he's a great scientist, but, but no, I was the graduate student. He, he was training me. I just referred to him as my postdoc. OK, so wonderful postdocs to, to mentor us. Then there was the art of walking past Stuart's <laughs> office. So Stuart was kind of difficult to get stuff out of, like if you needed a signature. Uh, one of the things on my application was that my master's is from 2007 and my PhD from 2008, because <laughs> I could never quite get that signature and into the office at the right time. Um, but by the end, I had figured out there was an art to walking by Stuart's office. So if you needed something from him, you just kind of waited until you heard him stop talking on the phone and you walked by. And without a doubt, he would yell, Lindley. And the correct thing to do was to go in and listen to him for a little while, and then just happen to hand him a form to sign. <laughs> or your thesis to sign, you know, something like that. Um, but it was also a, sort of these great moments where, you know, you'd just walk in and you would discuss something, whether it was sort of the gossip of what experiment's going to be funded, or especially as, as I was writing, sort of the history of physics. Um, and one of the things he really liked to talk about was sort of past experiments. And I think this is something that really he ingrained in, in me as a student, and I think a lot of us uh, 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 took this away too. Um, and so one of the, my favorite sort of Stuart talks about the history of physics was the history of neutrino oscillations. And this, of course, is the data from the Bouget experiment in 1984 where they claim to have discovered neutrino oscillations. Of course, this is not at the right distance. This is at neutrino oscillations. Um, and from what I understand, it's retracted in the Moroccan Journal of Physics. But um, <laughs> But of course, previous, the, as we went forward, we found neutrino oscillations other places and other experiments refuted this one. Um, but as I moved forward in my career, I remembered that you know, the path forward in physics is not as, as clear as we would like it to be, and that you really need to, uh, as we've said earlier, uh, believe the experiment, not the result you want the experiment to be. And so uh, once again, Dan and I kind of follow the same track going forward in our careers. We both were working on the theta-1-3 experiments. And if you go back and forth between these signals, it's sort of scary what one signal is, is real. Hopefully, we haven't made a mistake. <laughs> and we really have found a huge theta-1-3. And, uh, and we've done a good job on these experiments, but you know, in our, our training to really be skeptical and make sure we did a good job on these. OK, so then that was the middle and being Stuart's graduate student. And then came the end and the finishing. And I think for a lot of us, this was, this was, a, this was a challenge getting done, because uh, Stuart had really high standards for us. Um, so this was the goal. Um, there's <laughs> there is no thesis defense at Berkeley. Your, your defense is getting this signature. And this is Tom showing how it's done right. <laughs> <laughs> little direction. Um, so yes, so finishing wasn't always easy. I decided to make a plot from my estimation of our years in graduate school and a, a theoretical function. And uh, yes, I think the probability of graduating before your sixth year was zero. Definitely not easily. Um, and most of us really were out in this eight year range. But I think it's because he, he wanted us to go out into the world very well trained scientists and, and he did that. So my thesis in particular was boron-8 solar neutrinos in Camland. And I think this is a classic example of him letting us go out and find the problems that interest us, because those are the problems that we will pursue and do the best job at. Um, so I wanted to show this because I never got to show this in an actual talk. Because <laughs> um, everyone wants the Camland reactor talk, not the Camland uh, boron-8 talk. But it was a very fun analysis to do because in Camland, of course, we usually have the coincidence signal from antineutrinos. This is a single event in Camland, so there's a lot more things that are in background. The biggest background is actually the spallation products, uh, beryllium-11 and lithium-8. So my thesis was actually, um, oops, I should have reversed the slides. <laughs> so we, it was fairly background limited. I was as Camland is as good as Kamiokande at measuring the elastic scattering rate of boron-8 solar neutrinos. So we're not you know, too bad. 
but definitely not super Kamio Kande. <laughs> And really, it was a study of background rates. So in itself, I got all excited about all these light isotopes. And Stuart um, allowed me the freedom to, uh, to do the analyses for all of, all of these different isotopes and to do the Fluca calculations as to what they were, uh, some estimate of what we would expect. And uh, this took quite a bit of time. And so it was fun to show it here. And so this is the the other paper that came out of my thesis, and I think a nice piece of work for backgrounds in these low background experiments. So that was my thesis. I think I'm the third to last Stuart thesis. Just as an example of the other work of Stuart's students, um, I uh, thought that it'd be nice to show the, the actual last two Stuart, uh, Stuart's theses. Um, in 2011 from Tommy O'Donnell, the precision measurement from CAMLAN's uh, full data set up to that point, including um, some uh, data from the low reactor period. And then I see how Laura just came into the audience, Laura Cogler, the first of uh, Stewart students on the CORE experiment, doing a two neutrino double beta decay analysis in CORE Chino. And uh, so lots of great students, lots of great people, lots of great work. So then um, in the past year, as I was giving this talk, I was thinking of what I would like to have told Stuart about. It's been an exciting year for me and for many, in many uh, uh, elements of my life from professionally to uh, personally. I taught my first upper division course for physics majors, electricity and magnetism from Professor Suzuki, who some of you may know here. He lent me his notes, that was fun. Um, and then I also have gotten my own lab started. And based on Stuart's uh, training, what I really want to do is I want to go out and build something and, and measure something. So what I'm working on is trying to reconstruct direction in liquid scintillators. And it turns out, if you have better timing, this is what a timing of a liquid scintillator like CAMLAN looks like. Um, and due to the slow photomultiplier tubes, the shrank off light, which you see down here in black, um, and the red scintillation light all kind of comes at the same time. But if you actually have point, uh, much better timing resolution on your photodetectors, 0.1 nanoseconds, you can actually start separating the shrank off light from the scintillation light. Um, and it turns out that right now there are photodetectors that can give you this sort of 0.1 nanosecond resolution that you need. And if you do sort of a stupid throw these timing distributions into a water shrank off reconstruction algorithm, you actually can reconstruct the direction of 1.4 MeV electrons in simulation, because everything can be done in simulation. Um, and so now we're actually going to build a detector. I was told by the NSF at the end of the year that I'm going to be able to build a detector to see if we could do this with the real photo detectors. So then the other thing that I would have liked to show Stuart is uh, my, my baby boy, Octavian Siegel, who was born uh, in September. And so Stuart liked to tease me about ponies. He always made fun of the fact that I love ponies, but he always wanted me to take him riding. And we never had a meeting in Philadelphia where I actually have ponies for him to go ride. So this is Jazzy the Pony, and I would have liked to take Stuart to go ride Jazzy the Pony. <laughs> so in summary, Stuart was really a great advisor. Um, he provided great projects like Camland for us to work on. I think many of us that worked on Camland, actually many of us have never stopped working on Camland. We loved it so much. Um, and finally, and great people to work with. And, and he was just a, uh, an inspiration to all of his students. Thank you.